Hi everyone! So in a recent video, I had mentioned that there were a few plants we looked at in that video that kind of reminded me of other plants. They looked like some other plants. So for example, this Syngonium styromarchii I had mentioned reminds me a lot of my Thematophyllum by Pinnatifidum. And so today I was thinking it might be fun to take a look at some other plant doppelgangers, if you will. I guess you could also refer to these as like copycat plants or maybe even plant twins. And all of these plants that we're going to be looking at today, we're going to be looking at them in pairs. And I just want you to know that each of the plants in the pair, one's from one genus and one's from a different genus. So none of these lookalikes are from the same genus today. And I also thought it might be fun to do this in a way that lets you guys test your knowledge at home as we go along today. If you want to, of course you don't have to, but if you do want to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw the pictures of the plants up on screen like this. I'm then going to throw the names of the two genuses that these plants are in at the bottom of the screen like this. You guys guess which is in which, and then of course after the video today be sure to comment down below and let me know how many you got right. So in this case, this plant is the Anthurium, and this plant is the Philodendron, and this was also in that recent video I had mentioned that this particular Anthurium reminded me a lot of some of the climbing and crawling Philodendron we had looked at before, and in particular I think it kind of most reminded me of the Philodendron Plowmanii because of those big billowy leaves. So hopefully you guys kind of understand how we're going to be doing things today. So let's just jump into our first pair of plants. So these are the two plants that we're going to be taking a look at. And one of these is from the genus Philodendron, and one of these is from the genus Epiprimenum, aka Pothos. And while you guys are trying to decide which is which, I will let you know that even though these two particular plants are from different genuses, they are actually still from the same family, and they are both aeroids. So hopefully you have made your guesses as to which is which. And if you guessed that this was the philodendron and this was the epiprimenum, then you are correct. So what we're actually looking at here is a philodendron lemon lime and then what is commonly referred to as a neon potho, so an epiprimenum neon, if you will. And these plants look very similar to me. Obviously they are both vining plants. They both have these yellowish green kind of bright colored leaves. And you know, the nice thing about these doppelganger plants that we're looking at today, you guys, is if you've struggled with one of the genuses, so let's say you have always struggled with philodendrons, you don't do well with philodendrons, but you've done well with epiprimenums, then here's your excellent alternative to this lemon lime philodendron. If you like this lemon lime philodendron, but you haven't gotten one because you think you're not gonna be able to take care of it well because you've struggled with philodendron in the past, here's an excellent option for you to try alternatively. But let's move on to our next pair of plants and here they are for you to look at. And here are the genuses that they are associated with. One of them is a Shematoglottis and one of them is an Apobolus. And so once again, both of these plants are in the same family of plants, even though they're not in the same genus. And in this case, it's actually the same family of plants as the last two plants we looked at. These are, in fact, aeroids. So hopefully you've made your guesses and hopefully you got it right. Here is the Schismatoglottis and here is the Apobolus. And I kind of cheated a little bit on this one, you guys, because I didn't show you the plants from the side. If I had shown you from the side, it probably would have been way more obvious to you guys which one was the Apobolus, because the Apobolus does actually have a reddish purplish coloring to the underside of the leaves. But other than that, these plants look very, very similar. They have kind of the exact same growth pattern. They both have that beautiful kind of speckled, splotchy, grayish variegation on those leaves. Both gorgeous, gorgeous plants. And in this case, care requirements for these two are actually pretty similar. So I feel like if you're good with one of these, you probably would be good with the other one. I have heard that the Apobolus is maybe a little bit less finicky about some things than the Schematoglottis one is though. So if you have struggled with Schematoglottis before, then perhaps in this situation that Apobolus would be the better one for you. But let's move on to our next two plants. And so here they are for you. And here are our genuses. One of these is a Hoya and one of these is a Deschidia. And once again, these are in the same family of plants, even though they are in different genuses. I'll flash the families up on screen for you as we're going along here today as well, you guys. I'm really bad about pronouncing some of these plant family names. I'm okay with the genuses for the most part, but family names sometimes are a little bit tricky. But yes, so these are in the same family of plants. These are, as you can probably tell from these photos, both vining plants. So hopefully you have made your guesses. And so here we have the Hoya, 
and here we have the Dishidia. And for the most part, Dishidias look very, very similar to Hoyas, similar growth patterns. Both Hoyas and Dishidias are epiphytic plants. And so sometimes it's kind of hard to even tell the difference if you put one in front of me versus the other. I don't know if I could tell you if it was a Hoya or not, but it is an excellent alternative to Hoyas if you like that kind of look of the Hoyas, but you've struggled with Hoyas in the past, then Dishidias might be a better option for you. Now, if you do have a complaint about Hoyas that I know some people do about the fact that they have those brown stems, a lot of people just don't like the fact that the stems are brown and woody looking, the Dishidias, I'm getting tongue-tied over Dishidias today, you guys. But those actually tend to not have those brown stems. That's another way you can kind of usually tell them apart. So if that is something you don't like about Hoyas, then perhaps the Dishidias would be a better option for you as well for that reason. But let's go ahead and move on to our next pairing of plants. And these were also mentioned briefly in a recent video. So let's see how many of you uh, remember and can actually properly identify which is which. So here's the two plants once again, and here are the genuses. So one of these is a Peperomia, one of these is a Pilea. And in the case of these two plants, they are actually in different families as well. So this is the first one we've looked at where not only are we not in the same genus, but we are in different families, but I still think they look very similar. So have you guys figured it out yet? So here is your Pilea and here is your Peperomia. And so if you do recall, we did look at this Peperomia in my recent video on plants that are all green. And I had kind of mentioned in that video that it reminds me of this Pilea, but we hadn't looked at them side by side yet. And I really do think that they look very similar. Obviously that all green leaf has that little kind of lighter dot where it connects to the stem on the leaf. They're kind of slightly cupped. And the only real big difference here is that shape to that leaf. But still, I feel like they could pass for each other's twins. So here are our next two plants I want to take a look at that look very similar to each other. And one of these is a ficus and one of these is a pisonia. So once again, just like the last two plants we looked at, in this case, these are actually also in completely different plant families, not just different plant genuses. So let's see if you got it right. Here is your ficus and here is your pisonia. Now, I think these look very similar to each other. Obviously we've got that lighter colored leaf with that green kind of variegation on it. And these are both actually trees. So they're both gonna get very large. And I think though that they just look very, very similar to one another. They definitely could pass as each other's twins, at least in my opinion. But here are our next pair that I want you guys to take a look at here. And these are two very beautiful plants. I think they look very similar. And interestingly enough, the genus names are very similar. So one of these is an Aglionema and one of these is an Adelonema, Adelonema. Adelonema, that's how you say it. And so you might have been able to guess it just by the fact that the genus names are very similar, similar to one another, that these plants are actually in the same plant family. These are aeroids once again. And let's see if you got it right. So here is your Aglionema and here is your Adelonema. Adelonema, I swear you guys, that one's tripping me up today. Adelonema, but these are both gorgeous, gorgeous plants. If you are familiar with the Aglionema here, the Pictus tricolor, it is notorious for being a very difficult plant to care for. I hate to bring it to you, but I understand that the other one is also equally difficult to care for. So in this case, you know, maybe if you have had that Aglionema and it's not gone well, maybe try the other one over here, see if maybe it does better for you. But I have heard from people that they can be equally difficult, but they are also equally beautiful with those camouflaged pattern leaves absolutely gorgeous plants that totally could be copycats of each other. But here's our next pair of little copycat plants that I want us to look at. And one of these is a Hoya and one of these is a Ripsalis. And so these are definitely from different plant families. Some of you might think I'm taking a bit of a stretch here to say these look similar, but I really do feel like they look similar. And I didn't show you guys a picture of my personal one of these plants that I own because I wanted you to see a more mature one because I think it's more, you know, I think they look more similar. It's more obvious that they look similar when you're looking at mature versions of each of these plants. But hopefully you have made your guesses and gotten them right. Here is your Hoya and here is your Ripsalis. And so both of these plants are very linear in nature in terms of their growth. They've got kind of these thinner like stems and leaves and the way that they separate kind of looks very similar to me. So yeah, that's why I kind of feel like they could be total doppelgangers for each other. But 
I don't know, this was one of those ones where I was like, er, people might think I'm crazy about this one. So comment down below and let me know if you agree if they look alike or not. But here are our next pair of plants that I want to look at. And one of these is a hetera and one of these is a gerardanthus. This is how I believe it's pronounced. Hopefully I got that right. And once again, this is a situation where these are not only different genuses, these are completely different plant families. But if you're looking at those leaves, I think these look fairly similar. So let's see if you got this one right. Here is your hetera and here is your gerardanthus. So I really think these plants look very similar with the one exception, which is the base of the plant. So these both have vining leaves, vining stems, but as you can see on this gerardanthus, it has this big bulbous base that stores a lot of water. And this is why this plant, I believe is sometimes referred to as the Bigfoot plant? I could be wrong about that. If it's something else, I'll flash it up on screen for you. But I mean, the shape, the color, everything about these leaves to me, it looks so identical that I feel like if you couldn't see the base of the one plant, you would probably think that it is just your standard English ivy, which is what this other plant is. So definitely total plant twins. But up next, we have these two plants. And one of these is a bromeliad. And one of these is a dracaena. I feel like all of you are going to be able to get this one right, but we'll see. And these are in completely different plant families. Once again, not just different genuses. And so hopefully you guessed that this is the dracaena and that this is the bromeliad. And just a reminder, this is your common snake plant. And even though it is now technically in Dracaena, it did used to be in San Severia, but it is Dracaena now. I might've kind of thrown some of y'all for a little bit of a loop with that one, but that is technically the genus that it is in now. But as you can see, the shapes of these leaves are very similar with the exception that we've got that slight curling going on on the top of the bromeliad. But I kind of feel like they just look really, really similar to each other, enough so that they could be each other's doppelgangers. And I do also kind of feel like this bromeliad over here has a little bit of a Dr. Seuss vibe going on too, which is totally cool as well. So let's take a look at our next two plants. And one of these is a Solarolia, I believe is how it is pronounced. And one of these is yet another Pilea. And I feel like these are the two that are gonna be hardest for you guys to identify correctly. I feel like they look the most similar to each other out of probably all of the pairs of plants that we're gonna look at today. And they are in the same plant family in this case, so perhaps that's why they look even more similar to each other than some of the other pairs we've looked at. But hopefully you got it right. Here is the Pilea and here is the Solarolia. That is another one of those names, you guys, that is just gonna tongue tie me today. So very, very similar looking plants. They're both vining plants. They both get these tiny little leaves on these tiny little stems and they're absolutely beautiful. Now this is just a standard green version of a Pilea that's like this, but you do know that I own the Pilea Glauca that looks similar to this, but it does have bluish silvery colored leaves. But this is gonna have the same basic care requirements as that. Now I have heard that this one over here, which is commonly referred to as baby's tears, I believe is apparently a little bit difficult. I know some of you are probably thinking Pileas are difficult as well. You're not entirely wrong there. But I think people who have problems with the baby tears might have better luck with the Pilea. And since they look so similar, you know, why not just give that one a try if you really like the look of that baby's tears, but I've struggled with it in the past. So next up, we have these two plants. So one of these is a Calicia and one of these is a Trescantia. Now these, once again, are in the same family of plants. That's probably why they look so, so similar to each other. And hopefully you'll be able to guess which is which. And so here is your Trescantia and here is your Calicia. And either way, these plants are both beautiful. You guys know I love my Trescantia that I own. I would love to own a Calicia as well. In general, I find the one key difference, which once again, if I wasn't showing you pictures, if you saw them in person, it would probably be more obvious, is that the size of the leaves and the vines on the Calicias typically tend to be a bit smaller than on the Tradscantias. But beyond that, I think they look pretty, pretty similar to each other and could totally pass for one another just out on the street, if you will. Now I have saved our next few plant pairings for last because these are some of the ones that like are kind of mind blowing to me. And these both are going to involve Calathea, which by the way, have been reclassified as Go Persia, but I'll say Calathea on these ones, so it's not confusing for everybody. But I know a lot of people out there struggle with Calatheas, but they like how they look. And so that's why I'm so happy doppelgangers like this exist for Calatheas that can help make your life easier if you want a plant that looks like this, but you have struggled with Calatheas. 
So here's the first two I want to look at. And so once again, one of these is a Calathea, aka Go Persia, and one of these is, I believe it's pronounced Comferia. And so go ahead and take a close look here and see which you think is which. And in this particular case, once again, not just different genuses, completely different plant families as well. So hopefully you have gotten this one correct. Here is your Calathea and here is your Comferia. Area. Is this not astounding, you guys, how much this Comfera looks like a Calathea? I mean, for real. I mean, it has that same beautiful kind of patterning to it. You know, it reminds me of several different types of Calathea, but I went with the one that I felt was the closest look like to this plant, of course, since we are looking for doppelganger plants right now. But there are other plants in that Comferia genus as well that have patternings like this in kind of various different colors that look like even other Calatheas that we aren't looking at right now. So personally, I don't know anybody who has owned a Comferia to be able to say if it is, you know, a lot less difficult than Calathea. For those of you who have struggled with Calathea, there are some people I have follow on Instagram in the plant world that, you know, I don't, I don't personally know, but I follow them that have these. And they seem to think that they're fairly easy to take care of. But of course, once again, the only way to know for sure is to try because once again, what's easy for me might not be easy for you or vice versa. But this is a good alternative to give a go if you have struggled with Calathea, but you love the look of Calathea. But here is our next two plants I wanna take a look at. And once again, one of these is a Calathea and the other one is an Aglionema. So let's see if you can figure out which is which. And once again, completely different plant families in addition to being completely different plant genuses. And if you have struggled with Calathea, I'm willing to bet Aglionemas have probably been a little bit easier for you. Although some of you have told me that you've struggled with Aglionemas as well. So I don't know. Once again, it just depends on the individual person as to whether it would be easier for them or not. But let's see if you got it right. Here is the Calathea and here is the Aglionema. And how crazy is it that these two plants look this similar? And in addition to this one for the Aglionema, there's also this Aglionema, which I think kind of looks like this as well, just has kind of a slightly different shape to the leaves, but still an excellent alternative to that pinstripe Calathea, which everybody loves and apparently seems to be the fussiest Calathea for most people that I know, including myself. Excellent alternative in your Aglionema over here. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed taking a look at these plant doppelgangers today. If so, please be sure to click that like and or subscribe button down below and hopefully you scored well if you were testing your knowledge today don't forget to comment and let me know how you did and if you want to check out even more plant doppelgangers all of which i have personally owned and also get my opinion on which ones i would buy again you can check out this video next thank you so much for joining me today you guys and i look forward to seeing you again next time aloha